you don't want to miss these tips for selling your house. There are some key things you should not have on your property when you're selling your house. Here are the top seven. Okay, first up, and this might offend some of you and I'm so sorry for that, but one of the reasons I love putting YouTube videos out there about real estate is because I can be brutally honest. And if I lose business, I lose business. But I think that the truth is important and sometimes you have to hear what you don't wanna hear. So the first thing on my list and the last thing on my list are both possibilities to offend. The first thing not to have on your property when selling your house is you. Yep, that's right. Now, I'm not talking about needing to move out before selling your house. In fact, most cases, I'd say not to do that. Generally, a house that is being lived in currently shows better and sells for more than a vacant house. There are some exceptions to that, and if you want more information on how to stage your home yourself or prepping your house for sale, I've got great videos. I'll link in the description for you. So I'm not talking about you actually moving out. No, I'm talking about you getting out of Dodge for the showings. Why is this? Listen, most buyers are very uncomfortable when the home seller is present. You might be thinking, oh, I'll stay out of the way, or I have information that I wanna make sure that they know about the house, or I wanna make sure that they don't steal anything, or get that carpet dirty, or use a bathroom. I understand your concerns, but the cost versus reward is too high on this one. If you're selling your house, it's hopefully not going to be yours for very much longer, right? So you want the buyers to be able to form their own opinions and you don't want your being there to be the reason that they don't buy your house or maybe that they wanna get out of there so quickly because they feel so awkward. You can be the friendliest person and feel like it went so well and nine out of 10 times you do more damage than good. Besides potentially chasing away a future buyer, another reason not to be there is that we wanna get good, honest feedback from any buyer that walks through. And believe me, it's a rare person that would be honest with the homeowner if there are things that they don't like or that would turn them off. No one wants to hurt your feelings. So if your goal is to talk up the features and make sure that the buyers know all the great things, one solution that I do all the time as a listing agent is to contact every buyer's agent ahead of time before they walk through the home and verbally or via text, let them know about those extra details that the buyer might miss. Maybe give some further instructions or whatever you want and also following up with every buyer's agent for candid feedback. If I have a seller who's still not comfortable with that, then I'll offer to be at the showings myself. Buyers might feel a little awkward with my being there since here in the Dayton area of Ohio, the norm is for buyers to look at houses with their agent, not with the listing agent. But again, I'd be happy to be at the showings if that makes the seller feel more comfortable. And that's generally less uncomfortable for buyers than having the owner there at least. Okay, moving on to number two. The second thing not to have on your property when selling is in the same vein here, and it is personal photos and identifying items. Now, there's several reasons for this. One, you've probably heard before, buyers wanna picture themselves in the home. It makes it much more difficult to picture it as being their home when your family pictures are hanging everywhere, right? Now, I think that there are some exceptions to this. A few photos here and there is okay. It's not like you have to remove all signs of who you are, but the more neutral that you can make it, the better. However, that's not the only reason that you want to consider taking down personal photos and things like those kids' letters names over the beds or on kids' cubbies or whatever. And I don't wanna scare anyone, but I don't think it's a big surprise to anyone that not everyone is good and there are some bad guys out there. I know this is not a normal thing to talk about. And again, I'm not looking to instill fear in any of you by any means, but you don't need a bunch of random strangers knowing your kids' names or where you work or where your kids go to school, right? So take those backpacks off that have the little, you know, the little tags that tell where the school is and um, just make it a little bit more neutral. It's just not worth the risk. So let's just take that personal stuff down and keep it neutral, both for the appeal to potential buyers and also for you and your family's privacy and security. And speaking of privacy and security, that brings me to number three. You are going to want to keep all your valuables off the property. You might think, well, I'll just put them away in my underwear drawer or whatever. But really the best idea is just to store your jewelry, watches, expensive artwork in a secure place, like a bank safe deposit box. 
If you really have nice artwork, you might think that you wanna leave it up because it looks nice and it's gonna show well, and that might be true, but when you list your home on the MLS, it's out there for the whole world to see, and if you have a $10,000 or $100,000 piece of art or jewelry box on display, this could invite some unwanted visitors, and you don't want someone coming through your house for a showing that's just scoping the place out to hit it up next time you're not home. Switch those masterpieces out for something cheaper but tasteful. Get a safe deposit box for that Rolex or a great grandma's diamond necklace, or ask a neighbor or family member to hold on to it while you're showing and keep all of this in mind for when the professional pictures are taken too, because again, anyone can view those pictures online and it could attract folks in the market for more than just a house. If you have safes, make sure that those are covered up for pictures and showings too. People know that safes usually mean valuables, right? Before I move on to number four, I want you to know that if you happen to be in the Dayton area of Ohio, Tip City, Troy, Vandalia, Englewood, West Milton, Beaver Creek, Oakwood, Huber Heights, New Carlisle, really anywhere in the surrounding area, and you're thinking about selling, I do have a free PDF seller's guide that I update every quarter that I'd love to get into your hands. Just comment, I want a free seller's guide, and I'll get you to that, no strings attached. Okay, number four, medications. Most professional realtors are going to educate their buyer clients about privacy, not opening drawers, etc. But I'm telling you that there's gonna be time, regardless of their best efforts, there is often opportunity for those looking for it to snoop. So medicine cabinets, bedside drawers, again, ethically, they should be left alone, but aren't always. So I'm talking mainly about addictive medications. Again, just like the valuables, there's potential for people coming through your house with ulterior motives, and they have the floor plans, and they know where the bathrooms and the bedrooms are, and if there's someone looking for drugs, they're probably going to find it. Unfortunately, we do have an addiction problem going on right now. So something to consider would just to be throwing that in your purse or a little bag and taking it with you when you leave for showings. Another little side note along the same lines is that you might wanna consider partially childproofing. So buyers might not keep their kids super close and you don't want a kid thinking that medicine is candy or drinking that cleaner under the sink and creating a liability for you. It is up to the parents to watch them, of course, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't get sued even if it's not your fault. And your favorite vase or figurine, even though they shouldn't touch it, you might wanna move that out of reach of little hands as well. Number five, things not to have on your property when selling your house is signs of desperation. See, you're required by law to disclose the material defects of your property, any future assessments or zoning changes that you know about, and things like that. And that's actually in your best interest to disclose fully those things that a buyer would want to know that affect the value of your home. However, it is not required, and it is not always wise, to disclose your reasons for selling, especially if there's a distress situation. If you're getting divorced, if you lost your job, if your house is at risk of foreclosure, the reason you don't wanna give this away is because it gives the buyers and their agent an edge in negotiating if they know that you're desperate. I've been to houses for sale where there's a notice of non-payment of taxes on the front door. Not the best first impression, you know? Things like one side of the closet being cleaned out or one side of the bathroom vanity can give a hint that there's a marriage issue. Just take a look through the home and think what might be giving away something that I don't wanna give away and make a few little tweaks. Now, there could be some situations where you're looking for any offers, even low ones, as long as it's fast. And you can give permission to your listing agent to disclose that you are highly motivated. But even then, don't make it obvious for the showings. You don't want potential buyers thinking about difficult situations taking place in their future home. You want the property to be seen in the best light and to release all those good, happy hormones for the buyers. Another thing you want to not have laying about is number six, personal bills and important documents. You might think that leaving a stack of bills on the desk is no big deal, and most of the time it probably isn't, but again, not everyone has the best motivations or integrity, and you don't wanna be the victim of identity theft or someone getting a hold of a bank account or credit card numbers or account information. Also, just like medications and valuables, some folks might be on the prowl for car titles, passports, birth certificates. Don't leave checkbooks out. You want to lock your filing cabinets with personal records. Even the best agents showing your home might not be able to be with their clients 100% of the time, and folks who are looking for trouble know just where to find it. Listen, most buyers are going to be so respectful and stay with their agents and wouldn't think about rummaging through your drawers or files, but this is just an extra safety measure not all sellers consider that I wanted to bring to your attention. Here's another little side note. Although buyers shouldn't be opening up desk drawers, they have every right to be opening up cabinets, looking under sinks, opening a 
appliances like refrigerators and dishwashers, looking in crawl spaces and attics because these are all part of the house that they're potentially buying. I've had some sellers get upset about this, so I'm just telling you up front, be prepared for that and leave those access points open. It could prevent buyers from pulling out of contracts after inspection because if they're seeing a scary crawl space or an attic full of animal nests for the first time at the inspection, they could get scared. Now, hopefully you've paid attention to those places and made sure that they're good and prepped for sale, but I am definitely getting off the subject now. Let's get back to it. The final thing on my list of things not to have on your property when selling your house. Okay, I told you upfront that this last one might offend people, but stick with me and let me tell you the reasons for this one, which is number seven, evidence of animals. Now, if you're an animal lover, you might wonder why in the world this one is even on the list and even be slightly or very offended um, that I would say not to have evidence of animals. But the thing is about selling your house is you want to appeal to the masses. You want to avoid people knocking your house off their list and you'd be surprised at what a bad impression having evidence of animals can be. Now, my dad and my brothers are both veterinarians. Shout out to Tip City Veterinary Hospital. And I grew up with all sorts of animals, so this is not a personal issue for me, but I have walked through enough houses with buyers that I can tell some stories. In fact, I'm gonna tell you one in a minute. Now, when I say evidence of animals, I don't necessarily mean that you can't have any pet pictures or a dog bowl out. However, these things are usually really easy to just hide or stick in a closet or a drawer, and you want the house to be as clutter-free as possible anyway. So what am I talking about here? Mostly odor and hair. Big cages, pet beds, cat litter, cat towers. All of these things can contribute to the smell and certainly the clutter. Some people absolutely love animals, all kinds, and others are greatly opposed to them. Some have major allergies too. Cats in particular can get a really bad rap in the real estate world, but there's a good reason for that. Cat urine is extremely hard to get the smell out and it sinks into the subfloor. So some folks, if they've had bad past experience with that, are opposed to any houses that even have cats. Now, you might be okay with missing out on buyers who feel that way and to each his own, but it's my job if I'm listing a home to give my seller's home the best chance to get the best offers. And that usually comes when you can appeal to the most buyers and not exclude any if there are little things you can do to prevent it. So my recommendation for pictures and showings is to make sure that all evidence of pets is out of sight and make sure even on days when that you have no showings to be changing that litter daily and running a vacuum often to prevent hairballs. Oh my goodness, y'all, there was this one house that I showed last year. It's a million dollar home. It's immaculate. It's not following any of my warnings on not displaying expensive art. It was like a museum or an art hall in there. Hugely high ceilings, marble soaking tubs, vast spaces, enough room for three families easily. But there was this cat, just one cat, and it smelled so bad. Huh? You could smell it as soon as you went inside, but then when you went into the kitchen area, the closer you got in the laundry room that was off of there, the, the kitty litter box was in that, I had a hard time even breathing. That house was on the market forever and it was discounted multiple times and it was beautiful. On the other hand, one of my recent listings, the sellers had a cat and you'd never know it. It smelled amazing in that house and the cat was even present for some of the showings with no issues. And we had an offer within a week. So I've walked through houses that have like half of an inch of dog hair around the edge of most of the room. This is just one of those things that you really need to trust a third party and hope that you have a listing agent who's willing to be completely honest with you. Because you know, with smells, you just don't notice it because you're there, right? It might not even bother you very much, but I just wanted to make sure that you know, because we're talking about making your home as widely appealing as possible. And not everyone's gonna tell you this because they don't want to hurt or offend you. And I know that pets are part of the family, so it can get sticky. Talk Talking about this with owners. So there you have it, the top seven things that you should not have on the property when you're selling. These are all super important. Hopefully you understand why, if I did a good job at all explaining it. By the way, I totally forgot to introduce myself in case this is your first time finding me. My name is Lydia Rowe and I'm a realtor here in Tip City, Ohio. So that's why I know so much about this topic today. I have all sorts of great content on my channel that's gonna be helpful to you whether you're buying or selling here or just wanting to get to know the area. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button and get to educating yourself so that you can make the best and most informed decisions regarding your next move. I plan to put out another video soon on things you should have on your property when you're selling. And once that's done, I'll link it here too.
Until then, watch a playlist, grab a free seller's guide, set up a market search on my website to keep tabs on the market in your neighborhood. Whether you're looking to sell soon or it's gonna be a while, staying informed of the market is gonna help you. And as always, feel free to reach out anytime. My contact info is in the description. I will see you next time.